Thousands of Palestinians were rounded up and imprisoned. Since 1967, over 400,000. Many were held without any charges whatsoever, under harsh conditions where physical abuse and torture were rampant. Today, we bear witness to an extraordinary act in one of history's defining dramas. The Oslo process begins officially with the handshake on the White House lawn. I think the main misconception of the years of Oslo were years of peace. And in that period, when there was supposed to be a peace process underway, in fact, the daily lives of Palestinians throughout the occupied territories got worse and worse and worse. The reality, and I saw it with my own eyes at this, was a new form of Israeli domination over Palestinians. Economic and social rights, which are rights to health, education, work, etc. These areas are the areas that declined the worst for the majority of Palestinians, almost all Palestinians. All the economic indicators turned for the worse under Oslo during this peace process. Moreover, Israeli settlements have continued to expand throughout that period. At the same time that Israeli control was expanding, the Palestinian Authority was given the trappings of power over the shrinking and non-contiguous Palestinian land being held out as a future Palestinian state. The challenges of governing for the Palestine Authority are extraordinarily complex. This is an authority that has very little authority. It has virtually no power. Its power is derivative. It has the power that is given to it by Israel, and at any moment, any of those powers can be, be taken away. It was very convenient to believe that there is no occupation, that the occupation is over. How many aspects in your life somebody else determines for you? This is occupation. And Israel could determine in the last 10 years, could determine everything. But everybody heard Arafat saying 10 times to 100 times that Ramallah is liberated and Gaza is liberated. How can it be liberated if there is an army around it? The Palestinian officials spoke very warmly about the situation, about the reality, and they were hiding the fact that for the great majority of the population, these years were a disaster. Those abuses, those violations of the public trust have been happening regularly since the Oslo process began. Palestinians who would protest against Oslo were labeled as, as, as terrorists. The authority would not allow it, the PA. Instead of having a, a real national authority, you had this corrupt institution whose main task, as far as Israel is concerned, was to police the Palestinians and prevent them from resisting the continuing occupation. It uh, has wasted a lot of the money the international community has given it. One sees the villas of the leading Palestinian officials and the poverty with which the Palestinian masses are living in. The performance of the PLO in running the Palestinian Authority and its failures in negotiating with Israel have very much diminished support for the PLO leadership. While Americans were being told by the media that a peace process was moving forward, Israel continued its policy of home demolitions.
What you've got to have, uh, and I think it's a fair demand on the part of Palestinians that during the process of negotiation, you're not uh, turning over more and more territory to Israeli settlers uh, and changing the character of the land that you're supposed to be negotiating about. The notion that this is going to be a negotiable question does not ring true to any Palestinian who lives up against one of these settlements, which are continually expanding. And what does it mean to expand? It means you steal more land. Abdul Jawad is a Palestinian farmer whose family has lived there and tended the land for centuries. The Israeli authorities have confiscated countless acres of their farmland. <laughs> شوف شو بدل الجنة شوف شو سووا شوف شو كيف بيطلعوا من من تحت الحجار شايف كيف من تحت الحجار مش حرام هذا يبقى بدل ما يقعد بني آدم اللي بقول اللي بقول الله مش حرام هذا يقعد بداله حجر زي هذا هذه هذه معيشتنا لا إنا لا برا ولا بحرا ولا جو هذه المعيشة تعني وبنستنى لطف الله شو نعمل These settlers live and prosper at the expense of the Palestinians and the Palestinians' well-being, present well-being, and future well-being. And they don't see this horrible, disproportionate allocation of resources where Jewish settlers get water and electricity and gas, garbage pickup, all kinds of things that their Palestinian neighbors don't get because of the military occupation. هذيك المنطقة منطقة بين نعيم ممنوعة تجي علينا هذول الدور شوف يعني في واحد شوف يعني بي بي واحد بحوث في قلب الدور من العرب ولا واحد بحوث من العرب موجود هناك هذه السيارة يعني لو ماها إسرائيلية بعدوهاش They lost the, the middle of the valley for a bypass road, which is now an Israeli-only bypass road. They can't drive on it to go to their homes. The thing is extremely ugly to watch. I mean, this is just day-to-day -day life. I'm not talking about the fighting here. I mean, you walk through Hebron, it's an Arab city, you know, 100,000 Arabs, a couple hundred Jews. A settlers walking around with rifles, you know, looking as if they own the place. Settlers can go in, in a Palestinian village and burn the fields there, destroy the house, hit Palestinian, even shoot Palestinian. Several of the women have been beaten by settlers on different occasions. In each of those cases, we were just being a nonviolent presence on the street, observing when settlers were acting out. And they just attacked different ones of us. <laughs> The Israeli government is not doing anything to try and stop the settlers from violating Palestinian rights. From all the cases that settlers actually killed Palestinians, very few were accused of murder, but then the president came and gave amnesty or shortened the punishment that they received from the court. In, in some cases, they cooperate with them, they, they guard them. Like one, one case, the settlers went and um, took a house, a Palestinian house, and just said, well, now it's ours. So the border police stood down there to, to protect them because the Palestinians were angry. So the border police just stood there and protected the settlers uh, instead of, of course, arresting them, just saying it's illegal. The bottom line is to make things so difficult for the Palestinians that anybody that wants a future for their children, anybody that wants to get ahead in life, anybody that wants a normal life will leave. I mean, I'm saying that I have a house like this, 
و... ويعني بده بده يرحل وبده يروح ويرحل ويدشرها، وين بدنا نروح احنا وندشر ارضنا اللي زي هاد. The Jabber family continues to live under constant harassment. Most recently, Abdul Jawad broke his leg while trying to protect his grandchildren from settler attacks. Many of us feel hostage, that we're held hostage to the settlers. Because I think the vast majority of Israelis don't, don't care about the, the occupied territories. But we're held hostage to the settlers that have enough political power within the Israeli political system that they can frustrate any attempt to get them out. And as long as they're there, the Palestinians can't possibly make peace. There are two kinds of settlers, basically. There are the ideological settlers who, uh, who feel that uh, these territories are, uh, have been promised to the Jewish people by God, and they feel that every place which is mentioned in the Bible, they have the, not only the right, but the sacred duty to come and to, to build their, a modern Jewish settlement. And if Palestinians who live on that spot uh, have other ideas, then they have the right to, to break the resistance by force or to call in the army. And the other kind, which are the more um, a majority of the settlers are in fact ordinary Israelis who came there simply because the government was offering them very cheap housing. When you go to live there, then most of the money you get is a government loan, and if you stay there for 10 years, then you don't have to pay back the loan. Hi, hi, hi.